It feels very powerful to have the most famous and powerful coach in, in all of college football coming here. I want you to promise me and be, to be honest that if you get hurt, you will hear me in your ear saying, this is not worth it. I will listen to her, but I'm not definitely sure that I will have those faculties if that moment ever comes. I will treat you like a son. I will look out for your health. I will look out for your son's health, ma'am. Trust me. It has not lost any of its juice, the concussion story. Um, people still want to tell it. As a journalist and as networks, we need to continue to do that to sort of shine the light. You need to have, hopefully, the support of the people behind you to call it like it is. I think to call the game honestly and not to hide things that happen and then the people at home have to decide how they care to continue to watch a sport. Welcome to Sports Smarts, the National Sports Media Association series of podcasts that identify and examine the meaningful issues in sports. The NSMA, a nonprofit founded in 1959 to honor, preserve, and celebrate sports media, also supports sports journalism students, academics, and new entries in the profession. In our last episode, part one of Hits Health and Heroes, we examined how networks and journalists deal with broadcasting and covering concussive sports and the hows and whys of how decisions are made and justified. In today's episode, the second of two parts, we continue our look at concussive sports, the ethics of profiting on them, media coverage, the damage and the impact on players and their families, and what the future may hold for one of the most essential issues facing players, families, teams, and leagues. We'll be taking an excursion to a fictional place where the hypothetical challenges, ethics, and decisions are very similar to what we hear almost every day about concussions and brain injuries in sports. Please suspend disbelief as our panelists do. They also role play, so we ask you to go along with the notions within our hypothetical case and consider what you would do if you had to make tough choices. Once again, our panelists from part one join us for part two. They are Kathy Kudravi, Executive Director of Global Sports Matters and Professor of Practice at Arizona State's Walter Cronkite School of Journalism. She also was a coordinating producer at ESPN. Kathy was Editorial Director of Sports at CNN and was Digital Director at the American Sports Network. Kathy is joining us from Phoenix. From Syracuse is John Nicholson, he is a career broadcaster with two decades as a sporting event host, following more than 25 years as a news reporter and anchor. He is Professor Emeritus in Broadcast and Digital Journalism at Syracuse University, where he established and directed the Newhouse Sports Media Center. John is currently a freelance media talent coach and sports media consultant. Ted Shaker is a veteran of live television coverage as executive producer and creative lead of several Super Bowls, the NBA, U.S. Open Tennis, the Masters, NCAA basketball tournaments, and many more. Ted created a number of sports networks and has produced several seminal sports specials and documentaries. He is currently the CEO of Encourage, a startup that addresses critical issues in youth sports. Ted is joining us from New Canaan, Connecticut. From Winston-Salem, we have Dave Gorin. He is the executive director of the National Sports Media Association, a 24-year television sports veteran. He also serves as professor of practice, teaching sports broadcasting at Wake Forest University. He is the football sideline reporter on the Wake Forest Radio Network. Our moderator is Mark Ganguza, who will guide us on our journey. Here is part two of Hits, Health, and Heroes. It's now just about time for the 1 o'clock Eastern game to kick off. It's the first game of a really good doubleheader on SJTV's air. Devin McAverage's death still does linger, but pro football's incredible ability to numb our psyches is at full potency. So it's 12.45 p.m. East, and the pregame shows are about to wrap up. And as perfect as an agent's knack of theatrics could be, there's a tweet followed by an official press release from a pro football player by the name of Tom Tom Jasper. Five years ago, you see, Tom Tom was an NCAA superstar while playing for legendary coach Nick Craven. Today, he's a perennial NFL Pro Bowler who will be playing in the marquee 4 p.m. game. 
Tom Tom's a good guy, a clean player. He's a model teammate. And just the other day, in fact, he and his wife had their first child. That tweet I told you about earlier? Well, Tom Tom's not suiting up today, nor will he ever. He's quitting football just like that. He is done. He'll take a huge money hit, but he is done. It's over. His choice is preemptive, his choice is lucid, and it's definitive. Tom Tom wants to stay ahead of that one hit, maybe in a very meaningless play, in a very meaningless game, maybe even in practice that may trigger a CTE. Dave Gorn, what's going on in Tom Tom's head? Well, I think he's worried. He has true concern. And, you know, a lot of us, when we start to play sports as kids, it's fun. And you play for fun and play for fun some more. And you get to high school, it gets a little more serious. You get to college, it's almost like a job where you're spending as much time playing your sport and practicing your sport as you are going to class as a student. And at some point, some of us say, you know what? I am now experienced and wise enough to know that the most important thing for me and my family is to take care of me so I can take care of my family. And so he apparently has come to that realization and may have had it before, but maybe he was spurred by something that had happened previously. Uh, but now he has made up his mind and, and put it out there. Kathy Kudravi, after the announcement, what do you think is going on in the head of NFL owners, NFL players, NFL PA reps, et cetera? I'm sure the, probably the first reaction was, what the is, is going on here? Um, that there is some concern, some thought about why he would make this decision. Um, I'm sure that there is a, a, a thought process of, um, you know, owners at the NFLPA, somebody reaching out to him to say, you know, what was your thought process? But I'm sure that the reaction is shock from the rest of the ownership, shock from the rest of the members of the, of the union that this happened and probably shock with a lot of people. Kathy, do you think we're looking at a mutiny perhaps? I don't. I, I really don't. I think there you'll, you may see one or two who may think in this process, who may think, you know what, it's not worth it. You know, that I, I made great money. I can make great money. Everyone wants to play in the NFL. Every little kid, as Dave said, you know, when you start out playing as, as a, you know, a five-year-old running around in your backyard with a, with a plastic football, thinking that you're going to be the next Super Bowl winning quarterback. Um, but I don't think there's going to be this groundswell because I think there are still so many people who look at that as the epitome of, of athletic experience to do that. There will be, I think there will be some, there will be some players who'll say, you know what, I, I have much more time outside of the game than I do inside the game that I have 40, 50, 60 years ahead of me. And I'd like, to, you know, my brain to work. I'd like my knees to work. I'd like my back to be fine. And, and we'll make that decision. And I think once they, they sort of make that, that decision that I value that more than the time playing, they're done. Okay, so the games go on and there are the typical NFL game day injuries. A few players are caught it off. Four are in the concussion protocol. Nothing really shocking for a full day of NFL games. It's now around 5 o'clock. We're at a nice little house, well kept by a good family, who've been living there for a long, long time. Inside, the 4.30 game has just started, and everyone in the Williams family, the residents, is watching the game and enjoying their weekly Sunday family dinner. The Williams' only son, Peyton Walter Williams, just entered his senior year of high school. I guess you may have figured out that his parents' favorite player was Walter Peyton. Peyton plays high school football. He's always worn a Tom Tom Jasper jersey. No other player really will do, in Peyton's mind at least. But now, after Tom Tom's announcement, Peyton is stunned. He's confused. He just can't understand why Tom Tom left football to preserve his health. Peyton's mom does because she's a nurse in a trauma unit at the local hospital. Today's Sunday dinner is different, very different. In fact, there may never be another like it. There's a very special guest coming to the Williams home. Coach Nick Craven is visiting the same Nick Craven who helped make Tom Tom who he is or who he was. Tom Tom played for Coach and thrived under him. You should know that Peyton is the number two tight end in the country in the high school player ranking indexes. 
In fact, Coach is leaving his legendary Sunday coaches meetings to meet with Peyton and his family and perhaps make Peyton's wildest dreams come true. Dave Gorn, you'll be Peyton for a minute. Are you really thinking about your best interests? Uh, absolutely not. I am a high school senior, the star of my team. So you can bet that I'm going to put my name on that letter of intent and get a free ride to college, which will help my parents and will also help my career because I'm going to play in the NFL. Dave, I'm going to stop you for a second. Kathy, play Peyton's mother for a minute or two. What are you going to tell your son before he meets with Coach? Ooh, I'll tell him that, you know, I love him and that I appreciate, you know, everything he's done and, you know, what a, what a good boy he is and what he is trying to do to ensure that he can go to college. Um, you know, every parent faces that, that, you know, how the heck am I going to pay for college? And I have this super, super talented son, and he wants to follow in the footsteps of his cousin. Um, but I'm concerned about what may happen to him while he's there. And I want him to, to think about it. And I would say to my son, you know, please um, understand that it, it feels very powerful to have the most famous and powerful coach in, in all of college football coming here and wooing you and wanting you to play. And, I, and I, I'm thrilled that you've gotten to this point. Um, but I, I want you to have a long and healthy life. And I want you to learn a lot of things when you're in college, too. And I want you to, um, to promise me that if you are going to see, if this is something that you really want to do, I will support you. But I want you to promise me and be, to be honest that if you get hurt, if something happens, you will listen to that inner voice in, the, in you. You will hear me in your ear saying, you have a long life ahead of you. This is not worth it. Love you, Mom. But... I have had this dream for all these years, and I'm going to give it a go. Uh, I promise that if I get hurt, I will definitely remember your words and, and, and give them full thought. Uh, however, uh, knowing many players and many of my former teammates who went on to college, they have told me that sometimes if you get a concussion while you're playing, you're not really thinking clearly when you may should come out of the game, you stay in because that's the way you've always been trained. So I will say I will listen to her, but I'm not definitely sure that I will have those faculties if that moment ever comes. John Nicholson, play Coach Craven for us. What are you going to tell Peyton? What are you going to tell his mom? Ma'am, son, there is nothing that matters more to me as a football coach than the well-being of our student athletes. We are a successful program, one of the tops, as you know, but also we do our very best to make sure that you get everything you can academically in terms of your future inside and outside of football through our excellent university. And I can tell you this, things have changed here at our university. We are more careful now. And let me say this, I will treat you like a son. I will look out for your health. I will look out for your son's health, ma'am. And it does us no good to have your son in there playing when he is hurt. We have many terrific student athletes and they will carry the ball, well, literally, ma'am, son, to do that. We will look out for your well-being in every way. Trust me. <laughs> that was outstanding. And, and guess what, Coach? They do. Peyton decides to play for Nick Craven's team. He's made a deal with his parents, one, maybe two concussions, and he's out of football for life. No discussion, no questions asked. Peyton's committed to that decision. His parents will have it no other way also. By the way, the family agrees that this decision is strictly private. John Nicholson, again, your Coach Craven. Tell Peyton's mom who advocates for her son's health and well-being. Well, first of all, we have uh, academic advisors who are looking out for health as well as for their academic progress. We have a trainer 
several trainers who care very much about the health. And they'll come to me sometimes and bend my ear, and I don't always like it. But they are looking at, we have people whose job it is to make sure that these folks, these young men, are healthy. And again, as I said, somebody who is hurt out there in the game going the wrong way is not helpful to our team. So from even from a selfish standpoint, there's no point in us doing that. We have lots of good players. We are concerned, and the proof will be in the pudding. That's all I can tell you. You're listening to Hits Health and Heroes, a look into the effects and future of concussive sports and how the media deals with them. Our panelists are Kathy Kudravi, sports journalist and television producer, John Nicholson, veteran sportscast anchor and play-by-play broadcaster, Ted Shaker, television sports executive producer and television executive, and Dave Gorin, the executive director of the National Sports Media Association and a longtime television sports anchor. Let me give you a little update about the documentary. With all that blowback, it was very successful. Yes, SJTV took some hits, but the doc did its job by enlightening many to make decisions that were right for them. Let's move ahead 15 years from now. Let's call it 2035. We love our sports, and concussive sports are still around. Peyton Walter Williams is at the end of a great career in college and pro football. He's not only a likely first ballot Hall of Famer, but he's done his namesake proud, as he is a very visible and impactful proponent for good off the field. Peyton's a household name. He announces his retirement. He's fully healthy. He and a very impressive number of athletes don't fret as much as their forebears did about CTEs and brain injuries. Let's go around to all our participants. Dave Gorin, you'll be the first. Dave, what will have been done 15 years from now, at least in football, to safeguard players? Um, I think first would be keeping to improve the equipment, especially helmets, to make it safer. Um, Having, and even though it's made fun of, like a pitch count in baseball, you can only play a certain number of plays in a game. Kathy Kudravi? I think that, um, as Dave mentioned, the, the better equipment will be a, a, a big factor in this, that researchers are looking now at ways to make helmets more safe, uh, and I think that will be a big part, and I, I, I would pair in there with that um, uh, slight changes in the way the game is legislated and played, the, the idea of going to more rugby-style tackling, as a, as a former rugby player, you know, we tackled differently. You, you were not leading with the head. There was more wrap-up type tackling. And I think pairing the equipment and some rules changes push that toward, a little, toward more safety. Ted Shaker, how about you? Less contact. Are we talking flag football or flags on the quarterback? Uh, no, we're talking about younger kids and, and uh, trying to legislate a... a you know, a way for, for uh, football to be less contact at an early age, uh, but you still get to play flag football. Um, flag football is actually the most popular sport, uh, uh, growing sport in the country right now. Um, so I think it's, it's, it's less contact until you're, until you're in high school. No contact until you're in high school. Uh, and then I think there's less contact in practice, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, I honestly believe 15 years from now there'll be fewer people playing football, and so uh, it's going to be it's going to be interesting to see how they are able to continue to uh, to to keep uh, you know the feeder system from bottom up. Um, uh, the the equipment changes I think are going to be real. I think there are going to be other changes to the way the game is played that lessens the chance for the you know the 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 head to head kind of contact etc. Uh, but Ted, let me interrupt you for a second. You said something really important earlier, that the number of people entering football is going to reduce rather drastically. That's a huge red flag, isn't it? Yes, it sure is. How is the NFL going to counter that? There was a thing I read over the weekend that the NFL had a, 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 an event uh, for kids 9 to 12 that hope to and their parents and or the people around them think are the future stars of the NFL. And they had this event for kids that young 
to try to promote the idea that this is the next generation of great football players. Now, to me, that's insane that the NFL would play to that young an audience and try to grow it from that, uh, the ground up. It also indicates uh, concern about things. There are 9% fewer kids playing football uh, today uh, than there were three years ago. And this is all part of the, you know, the fear of injury, it seems to me. That stat, the 9%, is that Pop Warner football only? Yep. Yep. Fewer playing this year than there were three years ago. And, 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 and this has been going on for a while now. Ted, do you think the lure of big NFL money justifies the risks? And maybe one day very soon, big college money? Well, I think it will. And, and I think it's going to be a, a draw for certain people, you know. Um, and, and that's, you know, uh, some people say it, it, it's going to be for, for people who come from, you know, uh, more disadvantaged areas and this is a way out. Uh, I, I don't know. But, um, yeah, I, th- I think that... Uh, Watching people taken off the field on gurneys is is turning out to be a a, a pretty awful thing. And then to watch uh, the guy from the, the the Cleveland Browns hit the other guy in the head with his helmet might be the worst thing I've ever seen in in, in professional football in terms of a violent act. This you know, but at the same time, the NFL is one of the surest ways, one of the maybe you can count them on one hand, surest ways to gather an audience, a large audience. And that's that's not changing. John Nicholson, how about you? What will be done over the next 15 years to guarantee player safety? Well, everything, I think, can have an approach of a carrot or a stick. Let's talk about the stick, though. When you want to get somebody to stop bad behavior, very often the most effective way to do it is with punishment. So if you're talking about concussions, and we are, we're talking about people smashing heads together and so forth, serious, severe punishment for that behavior every single time. Err on the side of caution. If it looks like that's what happened, that's it. Out of the game, out of the next game, maybe out for six games, maybe out. Do it enough. Make the punishment severe enough, and people will stop doing it. There are rules against it already, but people essentially are getting away with it because the punishment is not severe enough. They don't really take it seriously in every case. Severe punishment, break the habit of behaving that way. Far fewer people will get hurt in that fashion. Dave Gorin, what's journalism's role here? We just continue to tell the story. As we get further down the road with helmet safety, we keep telling that story. There are journalists out there who will you know, make that their, their cause, if you will, that you know, I'm the, I'm the concussion reporter, so I'm going to follow every new thing that, uh, that happens with helmets or other padding. Um, uh, you know, maybe I'm the, the medical researcher on the medical side of concussions and CTE. Um, so I think just by, by the number of stories, and, and I think it, it's, it has not lost any of its juice, the concussion story. Um, people still want to tell it for our uh, our little seminars that we've done with the National Athletic Trainers Association, and, and we did one a year ago with Wake Forest Baptist Hospital. Concussion kept coming to the forefront. It's you know what what can we tell your people, the journalists? Like concussion, 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 um, and and it's been helpful to me. You know my side job is sideline reporter for Wake Forest football. Um, second game of the year this year. Rice is quarterback down, not moving. Uh, I knew the protocol because I I went through what Wake Forest Baptist Health did for us last year and and the, you know, the protocol they use, bring out the spine board, um, immobilizing the neck. So as journalists, I think we need to to learn those protocols and then convey them to the audience. Ted Shaker, how do you see the sports networks helping here? I I think that, you know, the, the most important thing they can do is to call the game and to call the game as they see it. I think Dave's point about knowing protocols is should be part of NFL seminars when the groups get together. That That's that's important. I think to call the game honestly and not to hide things that happen or try to not tell the full story would be the biggest mistake. Kathy Kudravi, we're going to you to have our last word. As a mother, as an athlete, as an educator, and as a journalist, 
Tell us, what would your advice be to parents, to kids who want to get involved in concussive sports? Do they totally support them? Do they scare the hell out of them? Do they totally dissuade them? What's What do you think should be done? I think one of the things that when we all went into journalism, um, the idea that we wanted to shine a light onto the areas of darkness is really important. And as a journalist and as networks, we need to continue to do that to sort of shine the light on when things like this happen and ways to make it better. And that I think that's really, really critical to keep in mind from the journalist standpoint that whether you're calling the game or you're covering the game, you need to, to, to have the wherewithal and hopefully the support of the people behind you to call it like it is, to say this is what happened or to show where things are, are, are not right. As a parent, um, and I have teenagers who are um, athletes, they don't play football, two girls, and my job as a parent is to advocate for their health and safety. And, but it's not just for them, it's for the other ones around me that I see. And um, I think we all know and have seen those parents who are more worried about a, a young athlete succeeding on the field, making it big, making it in front of the, the recruiter. We've seen the parents on the sidelines screaming at the kid, you know, knowing that this is your big chance to be recruited. And you need to take a step back and realize that, that as a parent, your number one priority is the health and safety and growth of your child and making sure that you are advocating for them. And I don't mean, you know, put my kid in. I mean, my kid looks concussed, get him out of there. My daughter looks hurt, don't let her get back in there. You know, I had a, a not a head injury, but a, my one daughter um, would fling herself around the volleyball court. And she clearly went down hard on her hip. And I could see she was struggling and she wanted to keep playing. And, you know, we were trying to signal to the coach that she was hurt. Coach saw it and pulled her out and she was not happy. But we have to advocate and make sure because the, their career, as much as we love sports and all of us in, uh, in this, on this call are, are, are sports fans and have been for a long time, it's fleeting and life is long. And I, I want to make sure that, that these kids who are participating in any sport, particularly, but particularly the contact sports, that somebody is looking out for them. Very well said, Kathy. Thanks. Well, we're at the end of our little hypothetical journey. I should let you all know that Peyton Walter Williams is now the senior anchor of SJTV's NFL pregame shows, and he's a national executive director of the Pop Warner Flag Football League. <laughs> I'm glad. So our story does end very, very well. Thank you all. Thanks for listening to part two of Hits Health and Heroes. Our sincere thanks to Kathy Kudravi, John Nicholson, Ted Shaker, and Dave Gorin for playing along and giving us their honest insight. We value any feedback about concussive sports and suggestions for our podcast, so please subscribe, join, and send us any thoughts. We'd love to hear from you. We're at National Sports Media Association on Facebook and LinkedIn at NSMA Sports Media on Twitter and Instagram. Our website and blog are at nationalsportsmedia.org. And down the short road, please look for more and the National Sports Media Association Sports Smarts podcast series. This is Kelsey Nicole Nelson. We hope you not only enjoyed the podcast, but improved your understanding of the issues and the decisions made behind them. Sports Smarts and Hits Health and Heroes are co-productions of the National Sports Media Association and Sunburst Creative Group. This podcast is the property of the National Sports Media Association. Any use of this podcast in any form without the authorization of the National Sports Media Association is forbidden. Copyright 2019, the National Sports Media Association, all rights reserved.